So our fleet MS version 2 works as expected, as you can see right here. So if we go to parameters and go to countries, you have a list of countries. But in the previous class, we now created an API from here. So instead of having a list of countries in HTML, you can actually also have an API. So I simply type on the type API here and you have list of countries coming from an API. So this is the API, which actually is the back end of our application. And in the previous class as well, we created an Angular UI. So we have this Angular UI we created, which actually fetches data from the back end. So we have this Angular UI front end. So if I run this Angular UI front end now, you'll see that it's going to fetch data from the back end Spring Boot API. So this means that we can have an API, Spring Boot API at the back end and Angular UI front end. So in that case, we have a full stack uh, development process. So if I go to this place now and go to countries, it works, but we've not displayed it on the page. So if you come here, you see that it displays here on the console. So Angular is actually fetching data onto the UI from the Spring Boot API. So this is API and UI, application programmer interface in Spring Boot, Angular user interface uh, using Angular 10. So what we are going to do now is to display this data in the HTML table. So literally, we can actually go to this page and copy the markup for this table and then use it in Angular. So that's basically what I'm going to do. And we also have the step-by-step -step I'm following is right here on my website, just in case you also want to follow it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to, actually just to remind you, we are in part 41. So we did part 40, 40 well, previously, now we are in part 41. So and there are a whole lot of other things we are going to be covering. So please subscribe if you've not subscribed. And also, if you are joining for the first time, if you have challenges, let me know. But I recommend you go to previous classes to start from the beginning. Or if you want to start from a particular place, well, please feel free. So let's continue now. So I'm going to go to the, uh, uh, to the Spring Boot API and just copy the markup for the country uh, and use it to uh, display in the Angular UI. So I'm going to, uh, to SRC main resources and go to templates and it should be parameters and go to countries. So it's going to be countries here. So I'll simply copy this table markup here. I'm simply going to copy this table markup here for the countries. I actually can take this header as well. Actually, I can take the section, this complete section here, display the, the header of the country table as well as the country data. So let me copy it. So right click and copy. And I'll go to the Angular UI application. Uh, so this is the Angular UI application and the country HTML component should be this one. So for now, it's very much empty. So I'm going to simply paste it right here. Maybe let me just uh, first put a breakpoint uh, like this. And I'm going to just paste what I copied from there. Now the markup for Angular is not exactly the same like in Spring Boot. So we have, here we have, take a look, we have TH each country country. In Angular is a bit different. We have ng4 let country in countries. So instead of using th each country countries, we are going to use ng4 let ng4 is equal to let country in countries. So let's go and adjust this right here. So what we are saying is instead of using th um, instead of here, so we are going to say going to just delete this in one second. So it's going to be uh, star ng4 is equal to let country in countries. So this is what we are going to use in case of Angular. And now in case of the text for the countries, uh, we are going to also make uh, a little bit of adjustment. So here we have um, double curly braces and then we have the item we want to use. So, and it's going to be inside the td slash td and also inside the, inside the span tag. So let's go make the change here. So here, instead of having this here, I'm going to simply take it out. Actually, just remember, oh, sorry. 
x y y okay common y okay so here I'm going to use double open braces and say country dot uh, the first one is country dot description country dot description and the second one is going to be con um, sorry, double call it braces like this country dot what dot capital and followed by the next one is going to be country dot code actually double call it braces country dot code and the next one is country dot nationality and finally we should have country dot continent okay so country dot continent so at this point we can actually take out all of this markup for um, for time leap uh, we can just uh, delete them completely so after now we are going to have this country uh, uh, list displayed in the HTML table um, yeah this should be fine so I'm going to now run this application actually uh, if I save it it should be able to refresh so if I just do command S to save everything and I go back to the UI and now nothing shows up <laughs> so, um, okay so let me just refresh nothing shows up okay okay so we still have our data but it's not actually displayed here on the table okay let's go troubleshoot okay so we have a typo here so it's not let country in countries but let country of countries so it's going to be off here and the good thing about angular is once you save it's going to recompile and reload the page so if we go back to the ui now to check so we can see that the country now displays you can see the country now displays so let's kind of adjust this page so this is not a ui class but let me just put you up to speed with angular so that in case you have challenges so to be able to solve this problem to display it in a in a, in a in a in a nice layout so let me go back to the angular this is the angular ui i will simply wrap everything inside a container so i'm going to say uh here the class is equal to container i'm going to just put this one right here and drag this here so if i save everything now uh, it says property countries is private only and accessible within com country component we can simply ignore this for now so if i come back here you can see that it have adjusted itself and displayed correctly now these actions now you can simply go to my website and simply copy it uh, right from here so we have this last td here so that is what we are going to use so i'm going to copy it from here and then use it uh, in the angular ui so i'm going to go to the angular ui so here instead of having this markup here instead of having this last markup here i'm going to simply paste the markup i copied from my website and i think we need to kind of add this tile because this tile adjusts the button a little bit to uh, to look nice so um so i'm copying it i'm going to the angular ui and i'm going to paste it if you have a style you always have to place this style in the styles of css file so at this point if i refresh if i save all it's going to recompile um and then we are going to see uh the changes displayed are reflected in our ui okay so this is the much i want us to do for now now we have the details edit and delete buttons displayed right there and we have our our, our 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 table also displayed so if you just want to go a little bit further this is the button for a new button to add a new country now we are talking about angular ui but this is not the the focus of this series but i'm just giving you what you, what it needs in case you want to go the track of angular ui you can actually continue creating angular ui um, component instead of using the Spring Boot API uh, co uh, component um, template using Timely. 
So here I'm going to just go to, um, I think I can just paste it somewhere here. I don't know if, how it's going to appear. So if I save everything now, and let's see how it plays out in the UI. So if I go back to the UI and come here, you can see we have new friend, but you can now change it to new countries uh, here. Okay, so where, what have we achieved? We've created a UI. I've also explained to you how to create an API because in the last class we created an API. So if you want to do API UI, that is front end, uh, uh, back end API application programmer interface, and then UI using Angular, that's user interface. So you have Angular UI, you have Spring Boot API, you now have the two of them. That is fine. That's a full stack development process. But this Fleet MS version 2, actually as version 1 and 2, is a structured monolith. That means that we are building all the app, uh, everything we need into a one to one big application and we are going to deploy it once. If we are doing API UI, you have two applications, back end and front end. You have to deploy them separately, you have to connect them, and that actually adds, adds to the complexity of microservices. So you want to choose what path you want to go, whether you want to do a structured monolith. You want to go for microservices where you have an API and a UI. So I'm going to give you everything uh, in this case. So in case of the Angular UI, if you want to go for that, simply just continue from here. Uh, in my website, you have where we are currently. Next step, you can now uh, go to the next step where you have CRUD operations in start of data and delete using Angular. It's also very clear right here in my website. So I'm going to be stopping here right now. Uh, in the next class, we are now going to be talking about form validation. And after form validation, we are also going to do React UI. So in case you want to use a React UI, that is also for you. Um, but for now, let's move to part 42 and that will be in the next class. Please remember, as I used to say, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. If you want to support me, please buy me a coffee or support me on, on Patreon or Stripe. Or leave me a nice comment to tell me this has been informative for you. So let's see in the next part. I remain kind on the tech pro and I'm always there for you.